hey guys this is Tapson Ishmael and I'm back again with another tutorial so in today's tutorial I'm going to walk you through how I designed um, should I say simple website uh, it's about two page website it's going to be more but I had to just do the layout for two pages so I'm going to walk you through how I went about that thing so as you can see this is the final um, website and this is actually the website I had to look at to be able to begin everything. So let me just walk you through. So starting with the actual website is um, netsuit.com forward slash blog. That was a site um, that contained the uh, similar layouts that I was, I was taxed to design. So I had to go through the site and then get everything well. And then after that, I had to go ahead to get the resources from the site. So I went ahead to um, grab the graphics. So all these graphics, everything that I was using this project was just for, should I say, demonstration purpose. Everything is going to be taken out and then replaced with actual um, photos and the rest of um, for the actual project. So I went ahead to grab the graphics. Um, I used some of the browser tools to be able to do this. So I had to use the inspect option to be able to um, download um, that particular image because I want a situation whereby if I'm working on it, it's easier to get an actual size and everything. So, so that's what I'm actually doing here. I downloaded the image, um, selected my location where I want to save it on my system. And then I went ahead to you know save it um, as well as go. I went ahead to download the other um, that's image. So, that is basically what I'm doing at this point. Because this is a lengthy video, I'm not going to be able to talk through the entire video. So I'll be having some sound play at some point. And um, since uh, I wasn't so, f I don't know if I was so fast, but if I'm so fast in going about the process, kindly pardon me because I was also, you know, I'm timed with this particular project. It took like about one hour, close to 30 minutes to uh, figure out everything. So I I was also very, very much particular with that. So as you can see, I'm currently downloading the resources. That's the images that I can use at various points for the project. So after um, downloading the resources, that is the pictures and the rest, I had to continue through to get even the colors and, and so on. So I you know, switch to Wizard Web Builder at this point, and then I had to check to see if I'm running the um, current version of the application. Then I went ahead to um, configure my page. So I set up the page width, which was style 600. Um, it was a bit bigger than my screen because I'm using my laptop. I had to um, zoom out a little bit by using the scroll wheel and then holding on control to zoom out a little bit. So I zoomed out to about 90, and then I went ahead to um, organize the files that are downloaded. That's the picture. So uh, after doing that, um, I went ahead to inspect the page to be able to get the size of various parts. So I went ahead to the, use the inspect object to be able to inspect the properties of the page and get a respective sizes. And then I came into Visible Web Builder, grab my layer to and then um, specify the actual size I was going to use. So this is 1600 by um, 70 pixels, then position it at the top, you know, come back, get the sizes for the different parts, um, be able to even get a size for the content, which has been positioned exactly in the middle of the page. So I went ahead to do that. So let me just, um, so still using the inspect to, to be able to grab those respective sizes. So for this particular one is 1188 by 70 pixels. So I went back to WYSIWYG Web Builder. Then I grabbed a new layer, specified the size to be 1188 by um, 70, I think it was 70 pixels. Yeah. So I specified that. And then I went ahead to reposition that in there to be able to help me uh, bring um, a line or a rule, a ruler to be able to serve as a guide for my project. So I went ahead to bring in, um, should I say a line or ruler from that point to help me with alignment of content exactly in the middle of the page. So 
after doing that i went ahead to um, grab the logo so let me make sure um, the color is set to white so i bet that centered the alignment and then i came back to the application and then i went ahead to download um, the logo i'm sure at this point i hadn't downloaded the logo yet so um yeah i think i yeah so i went ahead to get the logo grab the logo from this point and then after doing that i went to the location and then i brought it to um WYSIWYG web builder so let me just um yeah so i think that's what i did at this point i copied it to the respective location and then i brought it to WYSIWYG web builder and then positioned it where it has to be so after doing that then i was checking on their font um that is the font also my icon they have in there or the icon they have in there for the menu to see um how i can go about that so at this point i tried a couple of um, way to go about this first of all i was trying to see if i can use the font also my icon to do that but once or while in the process of trying that i decided why not check to see if the there's any sort of um, menu icon in there which can actually do that so at this point if you notice i typed menu um, in the search bar um, so i'm going to type menu there and then it gave me all the menu options so i tried the overlay menu thinking it was going to give me something close to the way the website menu behaves so i went through it previewed it tried it i noticed this wasn't really going to work out for me so i had to get rid of it and then i had to um, i think i was even checking the settings to see if there's a way to configure it to look the way i wanted i still went through the other menu options thinking i could get something try the panel menu i even went ahead to even configure the panel menu for some time so i changed the icon in it um, that is the text to an icon i changed the alignment i changed the position and then i went ahead to preview it just to see if it was going to work out but unfortunately it still wasn't going to serve my purpose so at this point i was um, trying to get appropriate icon to fit in there i wasn't getting something similar to what they had so i needed to improvise a little bit i searched through to see if i could find something that looked a bit close the alignment did but looks like the, with the alignment i have four bars instead of three bars so that wasn't uh, really something I would want, I'd wanted to use for this project. So I went ahead to, wait, to use the bars, the bars um, icon. So I selected the bars icon from the font or some icon um, category. And then I went ahead to, you know, specify, like configure it to match exactly the size that was on the site. So I took some time to do that. Um, I got something a bit close, but the functionality of the panel menu wasn't um, closer to what uh, the site was given. So then I had to get rid of it. So as at this point, I'm actually going through, you know, to configure the, um, the panel menu. Mostly, sometimes some of these things you need to try a couple of steps or a couple of processes to be able to get exactly what you want. So, um, once that didn't really suit what I wanted, I had to try something else. So, at this point, you could see that I'm still trying. I'm still, you know, configuring the um, that's the panel menu just to see if it was going to give me something that I wanted. So here I was doing the alignment uh, that is the offset for the image or the icon in there uh, just to have it sit in exactly the middle so i went ahead to reduce the size of it and then it moved a bit so i had to come back to change the offset to get it exactly in the middle so that's what i'm doing at this point um, so i tried a couple of um, number options to see which one was going to get it exactly in the middle and after getting that i um, went ahead to um, you know i think that was so i changed the color at this point so i went to styles went to the um the button section and then changed the color for the icon as well as the background um, to be able to test it out to see if it's really going to um, work out for me so that's what i'm doing at this point i'm trying to figure out the button color background and then the color for the button itself so 
I changed, I managed to change the colors to suit what I wanted. But unfortunately, um, like I said, or as you know, um, the panel menu is actually not going to serve my purpose in this particular um, video. So I've got to in this particular project. So, but I, of course, like I said, you have to try a couple of things. You have to try a couple of processes. You have to try a couple of tools just to see which one exactly is going to match or meet what you want. And then once you've been able to figure out what you want, you go ahead to proceed from there. Sometimes it takes some time to be able to um, see or figure out which tool to use. Sometimes, um, even sometimes even with the functionalities, it takes some time to be able to figure out all that. But you, you, don't, you need to, so, this whole web building process takes some time. It doesn't um, start like you just have everything going smooth from start to finish. At some point, you even end up spending so much time trying to make something work before then even spending you know, time creating um, the actual thing. So these are some of the things that I mostly encounter when I'm working on any project at all. It doesn't like go smooth from start to finish. I need to try a couple of things. I need to look at a couple of processes before I proceed with that. So at this point, I had finished um, designing the panel menu to see it what I wanted. But trying it, upon trying it, I noticed it was nowhere close to what I had on the actual or original website. I had to think of creating my own. Yeah, I was going to create my own with um, the uh, font of some um, icon as well as using the um, that of Google materials icon to do that but i was going to use events to control how um my menu and navigation was going to show so i was actually looking at how this is working here and then notice once you click this this slides from the top down uh you have the menu showing there you click on the console close it goes away so this is what i was going to do so i brought the layer to I, I got a CSS um, menu first because that's what I'm going to use for that. I went I to configure it to suit um, the height, the text, um, as well as the colors and everything. So that's what I'm actually doing at this point. I changed the size of um, it and then the background color. I changed that as well to match exactly what I had on the original website. So as you can see, that is what I'm doing at this point. So I had to come back to the actual site, use the inspect option, and then check to see the um, color that was being used. So at this point, I'm trying to find the color. So I, I think I figured out the color and another font type. Okay, so I was looking for the font type. I was trying to see if I could install exactly the uh, font type that it used, but it looks like it wasn't available on Google font. So then I resulted to use Open Sans for the project. So you notice that I, I still didn't find anything sans like um, as close to what they had. So at this time I decided I was going to use Open Sans since Open Sans is like a universal font you can use for almost any kind of website. So I decided to use that and then I checked the size um, as well as the color, the background color. So um, I was trying to um, check that from this point and then after getting the appropriate color as well as the size then I decided I was going to um, continue to use those colors to match exactly what I had at the back um, at um, my part or what I had on the navigation that I was trying to create to having that affected on both the CSS uh, menu as well as a new layer that I'm bringing in here. So I'm going to set this. Um, I was checking the size of, uh, of the layer at this point. So I had to go to inspect and then use the selector to, to check for the size, that's the width, as well as the height of that particular um, div or object or layer in there. So after getting that, then I came back to Visible Web Builder. I tried configuring it close to that, but it looked like Mine was a bit uh, smaller, so then I, I had to expand it a little bit at some point so I could use that to, I think I've actually expanded it um, to seven, um, 369, that's the width, at a size part. And then 
also i needed to um so i changed the color at this point after repositioning it um, looking at that small icon at the top i don't tend to do something but i noticed it wasn't really necessary to do that so i just um, went back to reposition it back to the bottom and then i tried moving resizing my css menu first and then i went ahead to um position it now before i, was, I position it i tried to get the uh, the menu items in the navigation object so i typed everything in notepad which was going to make it easier for me to just copy and paste and wizzy with web that using the css too so that is what i am doing at this point and after i finished typing everything i went back to wizzy with web Builder. I opened my CSS menu and then I typed my um, navigation items in it. So I have the industries, global, region, product, topic, category, the news, uh, Netsuite product, uh, um, and many more podcast here, yeah, Netsuite podcast and the rest. So I changed this, I removed everything and then I clicked on add, copy and paste. So that was what I was doing at this point, copying. And then I think I was even cutting, so it doesn't really confuse me at any point. So I kept adding the um, menu items until I finished everything. So kept copying and pasting. So these are some of the processes sometimes you have to um, do or use to be able to help speed up your work a little bit. Sometimes you need to figure out a way you can go about everything so that it doesn't really take so much time. Like you have to go and copy everything or you have to go and type everything from start to finish. You need to find tools that is going to make it a bit easier to go about the entire process. So that is what I was doing at this um, point. So I copied and pasted in there. Um, try to reconfigure the position of the text in it and I even change the font uh, font type I don't know I think the font type was open sounds but I change the font size as well as the colors that is a font colors of it before I went I had to reposition that in that layer which was in there so I think at this point I was getting something closer but I wasn't still satisfied because I needed to get the height a bit too much exactly that what was in there so um, that was what i did next and then i moved that to the layer that i have in there so uh, at this point i changed the background color of the layer i had brought so you can see that and then i moved the css menu into it so if you take a very good look at it, you notice that it doesn't really align properly. The background of the um, CSS menu doesn't tally. And then the size also of it doesn't also match the layer I had in there. So I needed to increase the height of the CSS menu. So I changed that to that, um, I think that was um, about 60 um, pixels. And then it's over here, I'm just trying to reposition it. So expand it, make sure it fits in there come back to um, styles okay so the height is 65 pixels instead and if you check the width the width was 80 which is fixed so i had to change that from fixed to um, variable and i also had to create padding from the left to the um the menu so i did that by setting that to about 10 then i changed so, so i set that to like 20 instead i changed the colors over here so it shows me the exact colors i want for the navigation and then i made sure my background colors were appropriate so i did set that i was checking over here to see if you hover over it what was the color you get but it was a bit difficult to get that actual color so then what i did was i just got one of the colors that was specified in the css of the um, the website and then i came back to my project and then used that as the um, rollover um, background or hoover background color so that's what i said here so i think over here i needed to set the same color i set for 
the first one that's the main background for the um, layer and then the hoover was this color I think I switched it here but I corrected it so if, if you notice so I have changed the color now I need to specify the width for my CSS menu because I don't like that small uh, background you know great background over there so I just why I changed I noticed that I was supposed to change the um, the width to so yeah I, I, I created the colors here and then yeah I touching that and then that was perfect and there was still a need for me to change the width I think I did it some time after I had to preview this to make sure everything was okay before I noticed that I think at this point I hadn't really noticed that yet so I was just trying to configure the um, the navigation objects to match appropriately um, the the width of my um, my layer so I previewed this and then once I hoovered I noticed okay it looks like there's some a problem somewhere so I had to come back and fix that so I came back to Wizy with web builder double click on my CSS menu and then this is why I noticed that the button size so if you look at the top we have fixed at the top so I corrected that so it still looks like I was still trying to figure out what the issue was but I finally noticed it and then I corrected that so this is where yeah so I changed the fixed variable and that was the fix so if you notice if I preview this again yeah so that was that was probably done there so after doing working on the navigation I, I I wasn't entirely done with the navigation there was more I was supposed to do the navigation but I had to um, pursue the other part so I think at this point I was trying to get a color appropriate color for the button that's the icon over there so I changed the colors that's the boot the hoover and then the default color and um, yeah so I changed the colors here to match exactly that so that was matching very well and I think I okay so I changed this to menu that's the ID of the uh, the menu or the icon and I duplicated that and change that to close so I was looking for the close icon or the cancel icon which was going to serve us once you um, you have the page uh, should I say you click on the icon the close icon should show for you to be able to close it once you have your navigation object showing and I was going to do that with event so I was searching through my icons I think at this point I was going through the wrong set of icons so I had to switch from the font of some icon to material icons that's from Google so I was still going through and I noticed I wasn't going to find what I needed here so I just got, I went ahead to leave this part and then proceeded to material icons so yeah I switched to material icons and then I searched for I think I said for close and then there uh, so this is the menu so it means that it meant that I was going to get that for the close as well so I searched for the close and then selected that and I went back to the font or some change that to material icons and then selected or search for menu to change that because this has a bit tiny uh, bars compared to that of the font or some icon so I positioned the close menu close to the menu um, icon and then uh, I think I renamed the layer containing the navigation object uh, so at this point I think, I think I went ahead to set events to this so the events were just quite simple what I wanted to do was once you click on the menu it shows you the layer or it brings the layer from the top just the same way it says on the website so the effect was on click show with effect I specified the target which is the layer that is the navigation layer and then at this point I had to go through the effect so I tried the effect one after the other uh, to see which one works exactly going to match what it had on the website so I was trying this after setting it I went ahead to um, preview it in the browser so I went ahead to um, set the appropriate um that is the effect for it selected the target and then went ahead to i think i set this to slide was it slide yeah i used one of this options over there but that wasn't what i wanted to so after previewing this in the browser i noticed that wasn't giving me what i wanted even though it's working so i had to go back 
and then change that to the appropriate effect so i tweak that from the slide down to i think i made it slide up i think i used drop up i was supposed to use the slide up instead but it looks like i was still thinking there was some of the effects with aside that which was going to help me achieve that so the drop up wasn't what i needed to use for that so i had to um, try it a couple of times and then come back to my project so i came back to my project and then i tried i think uh, this time around i used the slide down instead let me see if uh, the slide up instead so let me see so i was trying to figure out which one of them would work uh, but the actual the correct effect that worked was the slide up effect which allowed me to be able to set exactly the same effect that was on the website so if you notice this was like pretty close so but still from the bottom so i had to this time correct it um, changing it to the top right so i set the slide up and then i did the same for the close so i corrected that to also slide up and that was just about it so i preview this um i think i so the effect wasn't just one i said the effects for all the icons now the first effect is supposed to show the layer containing the menu the second effect is supposed to hide the menu icon and then the third effect is supposed to show the close icon so these three things are happening concurrently so once you click on the menu icon it hides itself it shows the um, layer containing the menu and then it also goes ahead to show the close icon so once you do for the close icon it also does the same so it closes the menu it closes or um, hides itself and then it shows the menu icon so that was basically um, the effect that I set and after configuring the effect I had to try it and it was working well I think at this point, in as much as I was still trying to get effect to work the way I wanted, I missed one of the steps and it wasn't really working at all. So even after this point, I had to come back and then correct that to still configuring things. Yeah, so that's zero. Okay, and moved it on top exactly on this. And then I had to use the object manager to hide the close because I wanted the close to come after I, so you see notice that the menu comes the menu shows the layer but doesn't hide itself so it means i had to correct that double click on that and then change the show um with effect property of the menu that was the second or the middle one to hide with effect and that was just about it to solve that particular um issue so i still selected um, fade and then yeah so going to hide that again yeah right and then preview this so you click on the menu it shows the layer it hides itself it shows the close or the console icon and yeah that's that's that was exactly what i wanted so at this point i have achieved the navigation for the site I've, i have my logo i have my top layer i still have a lot more to do so i need to add a search i need to work on the body of the um the page as well as need to work on the footer so i think at this point i proceeded to work on the footer section so uh, i was trying to get the appropriate color um of some points of the site so yeah i was picking the background color that was the um, extreme like to the right or the main background color of the site so i had to change my page my page background to that so I, uh, at this point i was changing the page background to that and after doing that, I proceeded to work on the footer. So this is where I was getting the footer color and then the items within the footer. So the footer was basically also a layer. I changed the size to 1600 and then the height was something else. So I was going to change the height to an appropriate height size. Um, at this point, I was just um, bringing that to create something. So I know I have a footer, but later I would complete it. So I tried picking the color for the footer to get an appropriate color so I could replace the color of it and Wizzy will go be order. So yeah, I have the color set now. And the next thing is for me to bring the items, uh, some of the items, not everything. So aside that also I had to bring, so if you notice there's a, an image 
on top of the layer before the layer itself so i had to bring a layer for that uh yes yeah, so i checked the size of that in the browser to know what size it would be if i'm bringing a new layer so that i can actually match that exactly so i went to my toolbox bring in a layer and then um specify the size of the layer and then um, set that image as the background so i went ahead to resize the layer to that's 1600 by i think that was like about 16 pixels that's the height and then set the background to be image and i selected that image which i had in there to serve as the background image and then i click on ok and that was looking just fine over there so i got rid of the image and then i went ahead to bring the other items that i was going to need in there um that's a footer so before then i did a content placeholder which i stretched to fit the actual size of the page and then i tried to see if there was anything more i had to see with regard to this so i went ahead to do the bottom part of the footer i started by i think getting some icons i duplicated the um the one i had in there change the properties of it that's the color the size and then the um the font type itself so facebook i didn't get facebook for material icon so i switched to um font or some icon and then i changed um, that so i selected facebook and i clicked on ok change the color change the size as well so the size i had to change the size to an e even size so, or an equal size so I did that using the size of the property inspector so 25 by 25 looked fine and then I changed the color to white so yeah that is the color size the color that I used for that and then I had to be sure if you hover over it the same um, color comes so that's white as well and then I moved that into the footer layer duplicated that to form the other icon so i had for twitter i had for facebook i had for linkedin i had for youtube and then i had for instagram so i went ahead to duplicate that by simply using ctrl c to copy and then ctrl v to paste select the appropriate icon move it and then um you know um, have it down for all the icons so that's what i did at this point and then when i was done the next thing i did was to make sure i had even spacing between them so after this point i'll do that or that will be the next thing i'll do so that's my last icon which happens to be the instagram icon and so that's just about the icons now i'm going to go ahead to do the event spacing between them so i selected the icons holding on the shift key selected all of them moved them a little bit closer to each other selected the last one went to distribute then i distributed evenly to the uh, using the horizontal option to create even spacing between them and then after that i had to preview it in the browser to be sure that it had actually um, you know taken effect the way i wanted to i was trying to confirm from the browser or the original site um, if that's like actually the same so i think even before previewing i went ahead to create the links at the bottom so i used the css um menu option to do that so i brought a css menu um, change the properties of it and then um, typed in all that has to be in there so i copied everything into my notepad and then i was able to get them to um, the css menu as well as um, be able to configure the css menu taking away the border taking away the background color taking away 
uh, or changing the fonts to the respective fonts that I'll be using and then setting appropriate um, size for the fonts and then the color. Uh, so that's basically what I, I did in here, copying and pasting the links to create the links that I want. And then after that, going ahead to change the colors and then the size. And then I went ahead to change the position entirely of the CSS menu. So I had to um, bring it into the layer, but I think at this point, I'm just trying to get the appropriate font type for that and then expand it a little bit. So certain pattern to the left as well as to the right. And then I went out to expand it, move it into my layer. So after this point, I think take away the background to transparent there was still a border over there so yeah after noticing that i had to take out the border so i'm having my footer um, navig navigation links almost close to what is on the um, original website and i finished reposition that save that preview this in the browser just to check to see if everything is in its place so i have that now the next thing is to bring i think um I had a text, a copyright text at the bottom. So that's the um, copyright 2020 Oracle. So I there's something similar in WYSIWYG Web Builder where you use the ready to use JavaScript. So I brought that in the um, canvas and then I selected the copyright notice. And then I went ahead to configure that, changing the color, changing the font type, the font size, as well as taking away some of the information that I didn't need there. So I took away the text information uh, because I wanted to keep it as short as possible. I took away the date, the start date as well. And then I changed the color. So I changed the color, um, the font type, as well as the font um, size. So the color was white. The font type was open sans. And then the, um, the size of the font is 12. Um, I think it, was, it used to be 12. Um, but I had to change that to like about 10 pixels to match exactly what was there. So I had to be able to confirm this by previewing it and I noticed it was a bit bigger. So I came back to the application and then changed that to like, I think about 10 pixels and that looked fine. I resized it and then repositioned it close to the navigation um, menu or navigation items in there. So I think at this point I was true a bit with the navigation, that is the, the footer. And then I continued to work on the, um, I think I worked on the, that was the other page, that's the index page itself. But I had to set the top layer, that's the header, to be a sticky layer. Because if you take a good look at the actual page, once you scroll, you notice that it stays, stays there. So here I'm renaming the page to master page because this is going to be my master page. And then I duplicated it or cloned it to have that serve as my index page. So to be able to prevent any conflict on those two pages, I had to, uh, before that, I had to even select my master page not to publish and then I select all do, the do not um, options. And then I came to my index page, deleted everything on it. Um, so I don't, I don't get any sort of conflict with um, that compared to my master page. So I deleted almost everything, left one of the layers, cloned it. I cloned the layer so it prevents um, like sort of a duplicate and ID. So I deleted the old layer and then uh, using the new layer, I thought of how I was going to go about that particular layer, that particular section. So. I repositioned or resized this layer, given using the appropriate size. I changed the height to, that was 270, moved it up there, and then changed the background property to the image. So I selected the respective image that I had 
from the site and uh, place that in there. So that's the image. I change the properties. That's a horizontal, vertical, and then the repeat property to do not repeat. So those are basically the, uh, the options I worked with. Now I'm supposed to bring in that text in there, which says net suit block. So I had to even look out for the font type, but I noticed that they are still the same fonts they're using as the Oracle Sans. So I just had to copy the text and then use Open Sans for it. So I copied the text, pasted it um, in a canvas, uh, change the font type as well as the font property. That's the font size, the font type, and then a color. And then I, I think the color is even the same, so there's no need to even change the color. So I expanded it to fit in there. And I noticed that it was a bit bigger, so I had to reduce the size, um, the size just a little bit to something a bit smaller than what was there. And then I went ahead to reposition that. So yeah, that's me repositioning that. And Great. So now the next thing is to go about creating the navigation that um, social media icons, which was down there. So what I did was I had to bring in a new layer and then I had to double click on that, expand um, that set the properties of the page first to select my master page. So that's what I was doing. I linked my master page. And then at this point, I noticed that there was some slight error at the top. It looks like I had to set, uh, change the the type of the layer I use it because I duplicated the layer. It's, it was still a sticky layer, so I had to change that to a default layer. Previewed and everything looked fine from here. So at this point, it looks like I wasn't connected to the internet, so I was having some um, delays and having that loaded. But uh, eventually, I got it loaded and I was able to see how everything looks like. And then I went ahead to do the various aspects of the entire site. So I went ahead to, um, so I think I, I set the sticky property orientation to center, center, top center, right? So that's what I did. So it doesn't move to the left side of the screen. And then after that, I came back to the index page. Um, so I came back to the index page and then I went ahead to um, correct the other things that are supposed to be corrected over there. So I had to reposition the layers uh, so as it's not, um, you know, sometimes some of the layers come on top of the others. And for in my case, because of the navigation, once I preview it and I try to click on the navigation, I noticed that it was um, some of the objects were coming into it. So I had to um, take a look at that and correct that. And even I had to even correct the way I went about the navigation, the type of layer I used, I had to change that because with the kind of layer I used, once you scroll on the page, you notice that it scrolls along and that wasn't what I wanted. So I had to even think of a way to go about that. So we'll get to that point shortly. By this point, I was going to go about the icons, those icons I had in there, the social media icons. I basically cloned what I had on the master page, which is the footer section. And then I use that for this particular part. So I was just trying to get the size. So I'm able to set the, um, the layer, the new layer to that particular size and then position everything in it. So here I got another layer, brought it inside, set the appropriate size, made sure it was positioned rightly in the middle of that particular layer in there. And then the space from the top to it wasn't so much wide, at least something close to what I had on the original site. And then I went, I had to go to the master page to copy the icons at the, sec, um, the footer section and then um, came back to the index page and then pasted them here. So I think, uh, yeah, came back to the next page, pasted. So I think I actually just needed one because I was going to make some changes to it and then duplicate that so I didn't bring everything I just copied one 
came into the um, index page and then I went I had to change the size of it as well as the color I was trying to see if I could get the color but it looks like it wasn't as part of the CSS option so I, I think I figured out a color one of the colors if that's so or I just um, use my own color for that So I'm still trying to find the color. So I think I found something that was going to work. So I just copied it, came back to my project, and then I set that to be the color I was going to use for it. So that was what I did at this point. And then I decided Hoover color to also be the same thing. Move this, let's change the size first. And then I move that into that um, small or sub layer, which is, is, is over there. So I was trying to check the position of the icon. So I moved it. I think uh, my position wasn't right at this point, but I had to correct it later on too. Here, I went ahead to duplicate the icons and then I went ahead to set the respective icons. So I think I needed six. So I um, selected the rest, so set even spacing between them. Yeah, I think that even the spacing was too much. I corrected that later on. But uh, that's what I did. And after that, I changed their icons to their respective or their matching icons. So from Twitter, um, the next one, which I think was um, LinkedIn. And I also had for YouTube, Instagram, and then the final one, which was RSS or mostly RSS um, feed. So that's me changing the icons of the respective um, icons over there. So, yeah, so that's for the Instagram and finally the last one which is the RSS feed so selected that as well and I had all my icons but I think the spaces that was in between them was a bit more compared to the original or the yeah the original website or page I was having a look at so I came back to correct the space in between them So to be able to work on the spacing, there was a need to select their respective icons and then um, use the evenly distribute um, among them option to be able to distribute the icon being it vertically or horizontally. But in this case, because I wanted to, um, to be done in a horizontal way, I went ahead to use the distribute um, horizontally to set equal spacing between them horizontally. And that worked much better compared to what I had um, previously. So I went ahead to do the other aspect of the site. I started with the top text. I had to get a test, grab the test from the site or the page. And then I went ahead to do the side test as well. So I um, copied, I uh, managed to copy the side text and then I, I was trying to look at the effect that was done on top. That once you hover over on top of any of the images, it gives you this sort of, um, should I say, fade effect. So I was just trying to see if I would achieve that, but I actually didn't even proceed to work on that because I hadn't created any links for those um, images. So I just went ahead to bring in the text and um, I um, size, resize the text as well as um, reformat it so I get the actual color I wanted. So at this point, um, I was trying to set the, the, the text to match um, what I had in there. So I had to bring in a layer to um, set the image in a layer. So that's the layer. I had to get the, um, it's well positioned. That's exactly in the middle or horizontally in the, um, the mother layer and set the size of the 
um, the text to something I think about uh, 25 was too much I think so I later reduced that and then I had to check the color for it so I got a color using the property inspector tool in the browser and then I came back to apply the color to to that particular test So I went ahead to drag the appropriate image that is supposed to be in there to position that. So I had to resize the image so it, it could fit in the, um, the, the layer that I had brought so that I don't have anything overlapping. I also don't want to uh, fully exactly what I have on the original page or site because some of them may not necessarily look like what it is if you are supposed to follow them that way. So. I just went ahead to do some of them my own way, especially some of the sizes, to so that at the end at least I'm able to um, get something close, not exactly, but close to what I wanted. So I just had to come. So I had to keep going back and forth with the the um, the actual website and then what I was working on. So that at the end. I am able to match or get exactly or something closer to what the final look should look like. So that was what basically I was I was doing. So if you notice, I keep switching back and forth between the site and then um, the what I was working on now because I wasn't using multiple screens. So that's how come I had to be going about things in that way. But maybe for subsequent projects, sometimes I use multiple screens. Sometimes I just had to use a single screen so that um, depending on where I may be. If I have my laptop with me, it's easier for me to work on some of these things. So at the end of the day, I just had to still be able to get the work done. And that was what basically I was trying to uh, do or accomplish with this particular project. So I know this video is going to be a, a bit lengthy one because as I um, looking at everything, I took about total of one hour. 30 plus minutes to finish with a back and forth, pausing at some point, coming back and the rest. But after that, I'm yet to make a responsive. So that will be in a different video to look at how I go about a responsive process. So in case you haven't seen me doing anything from start to finish, this tutorial is basically going to help you with um, that. So at this point, I was basically trying to configure the text there to match uh, something close to what I had in here. So it took me some time to be able to get that at least something uh, much close so yeah that's that's what I'm doing at this point So at this point, because I was trying to link the text and then have similar effects compared to the original site, I had to create a style for the link so I could um, reuse it anytime I wanted to. There wasn't a need for me to recreate or maybe just link this separately. So I created a link, um, that's a link style, called it link, change the colors, the appropriate colors, and then set that to the link that I was creating at that point. So I had to set this to the pound or the hash key because I didn't want it to go anywhere. So if you notice, if I hover, it gives me the text with the colors, but it wasn't doing for all. I wanted to try to accomplish something, the same thing, which I can, but probably might take me some time to be able to get that done. But uh, so I, I just left it as it is. Um, then I resize um, the entire text and then check the text very well so I know where what is starting at what point and where to end what. So that was what I did at this point to get the text a little bit close to the actual website. So I think I'm true at that point. Um, the next thing is to 
take a look at what was next from there. So I think I created a featured text and then I went ahead to do other things from there. So at this point, I'm still trying to um, position the text and everything well. So at this moment, I'm trying to expand the height of the layer so I can position the other object in it. Now, to be able to accomplish that, I decided I was going to use the card to, to do that. Since the card to makes it easier to stack a couple of elements or objects together, and then once you move it, they all come along. I decided I was going to use the card to, to do that. So I cleared the card, and then I decided I was going to start with the image. So the image is first, we have the small text, and then we have the next text after that. So I started off with the image. Now, one easy thing about this was that because of the images, I, mean, I was using the sizes were equal the same so I didn't have to struggle with the size of the images so that is what I brought in here one of the images and then went ahead to copy and paste the text uh, I think I timed this one instead and then for the next one I copied from the site and then pasted that in there And after that, the, um, after bringing a test, so I had to specify the font type, which is Open Sans. That is what I'm using throughout the entire project. And then after that, uh, of course, I had to specify, uh, I think the size, I left the size on, um, okay, this was the next one. So I changed the size of the next one to 18. And then I changed the alignment to left. And even after that, I added some part into the left-hand side. So it just moved the text slightly away from the exact edge of the um, screen. So I increase the size of the second text to 20 pixels. And then uh, I think the first one, uh, yeah, so I set the pattern to the top. I increase the pattern to the top as well as to the bottom to create a space between those two texts as well as the image. And after previewing it, um, I noticed I, I probably would have to increase the pattern a little bit more. So I did that. And uh, I think, yeah, the font size 18 was fine. Instead of making it 20, I came back to 18. And yeah, I tried previewing. I noticed that there was a border around the entire um, cut. So I had to come back and then take off the border from there. So that's what I did here. Sent, uh, set that to zero, saved. And then try previewing again to make sure. Okay, so I, I instead of previewing, I had to check the other um, objects that I had and then set the pattern right before I go ahead to duplicate for the other ones. So that is the right pattern um, that I use for the top as well as the bottom of the financials text. And then I set the border to the left, uh, that is pattern to the left, like about two pixels. I did same for the text after. So it creates some space between the edge of the card as well as that of the text. And I did the same for the right ones as well. So that doesn't really look like it's exactly at the edge of um, the screen or the card there. So at this time, I went ahead to clone the cards. So I created three for each um, as a row. Yes, I did um, three for each row. And then I distributed them evenly I went ahead to change the images for the other two and then I went ahead to duplicate it for the, the remaining card. So that is what I'm uh, trying to do here. So I was trying to find the appropriate size of the card so I could use him for what I have um, in mind. So after figuring out, uh, I think, uh, the size, then I tried copying the text to use it for the next card. And then I went ahead to um, change the size of the cards that I had there, as well as um, 
change the text and then I went ahead to make sure they were evenly distributed. So changing the text here, uh, service industry and um, also um, I had to change the images. So I changed the images for those two cards and then I went ahead to duplicate those three cards and all. So I uh, changed the image for that as well. Let me, um, so went back to the card. Okay, so I think I was trying to get a text for um, that particular card here. So I managed to get that, pasted that in here, um, copied this, pasted that as the smaller text. And then after that, I went ahead to um, increase the size of the card. Um, so I changed the image before increasing the size of the card. So, and I took a preview, everything looked fine. So then it was time to duplicate to make the other um, cards as well. So at this point, I noticed that there was actually a problem with the navigation. If you scroll up and then click on it, you notice that um, it doesn't like it scrolls along. So I had to find a way to um, fix that. So the way I could go about that was um, um, bring a new layer to and then change the mode of the layer. So uh, that's what I'm doing now, bringing a layer to the canvas. Um, so I changed the um, I showed the objects for that's the um, the layer containing navigation items. I had to move the um, footer a bit to the bottom so I have some space to work there. And then I expanded the layer, the new layer, which is now going to contain the um, navigation. So I expanded that, made sure I moved everything to the back. I uh, moved it out of its way and then make sure I position the navigation layer into this, right? So yes, yeah, so I repositioned that. And then after that, I had to change the background color to transparent. So, okay, before even doing that, I had to make, um, change the, um, the ID of that. So since I had already set an animation to the um, black, um, layer containing navigation items. I was I, I had to interchange that. I was just hoping the animations were automatically going to take effect, but it looks like it didn't. So I had to still go back and then correct that. But after that, I previewed this. It worked fine, but still there was a problem because it still screws. So I had to change the mode of the um, the new layer, which I brought on the master page, to a docking layer. So um, yeah, after changing the um, the navigation to, yeah, right. So after changing that, I then it still was still the same because like after I screw, it still goes back to the top. So trying to fix that, I had to um, change the mode of the that layer to docking layer. So that's what I'm doing here. The docking layer worked fine. So yeah, so setting that as our event, yeah. So hide that and then once I preview that everything was working fine now. The only challenge with this solution is that once you have the navigation showing, you can't click on any of the links over there because automatically or uh, the normal circumstance we have a navigation item hovering on top of um, the object over there which doesn't look visible but that's what's actually happening so one thing you need to take note sometimes some of these uh, limitations come up but once you find a way it's working it's actually a good thing so that was how i went about the navigation or fixing the navigation and then after doing that i continued so I was, at this point i was trying to um, change the size to hope that i could still have access to click on the object but it looked like it wasn't going to work so i there are actually ways, a couple of other ways that you can go about to achieve something similar. But all you need to bear in mind is you can't get exactly 100% of what is already there. So you just have to 
um, work with what um, works for you at the end once it works that's that's all you need at the end so at this point i increase the size of the cards a little bit i did the same for the others and then after that i went ahead to duplicate all the cards so that i could form more um, rows as well as columns for the post so this is more or less like a blog page which is going to have a couple of articles so all these um articles are going to be linked to respective art articles so i increase the height of the layer that's the main layer and then i went ahead to um so i, I checked the number of more columns that i have so i could duplicate those cards appropriately so i increase the height a little bit more and then i went ahead to duplicate those cards So that was the first duplicate I created, and then I did a second one. That, uh, that's actually it. And yeah, I had to distribute the spaces horizontally um, vertically between them evenly. And then I had to align the middle cards to the last one to the right so they all have equal spaces between them. And I had to check for um, uh, to, to change the images. I had to change all those images. So I selected appropriate images for those respective cards. So still um, selecting appropriate images. Now we're done now. Now the next thing is to create a pagination for the right hand section. So there's pagination in um, Wizard Web Builder. So I had to expand the layer a little bit and then go back to the uh, uh, two box uh, to set or select the uh, pagination object. So uh, I think that's what I did next here. Right, so I search for the pagination object and then I brought it. I didn't have to do any configuration because I don't have all the pages for this project yet. So the only thing I did was just to align it to the right and uh, reposition it. And that was just about it. So I have the pagination done and um, we trying to reposition it where it has to be and align it to the right hand side of the card over there. So I think I'm beginning to get my page into shape now. Just some few things that has to be done. So the search um, section, which is going to go to the master page. That's what I did here. So I go to the toolbox, search for the search two. That is a site search two put it in there and then I had to move it to the um, appropriate place which is in the header and then I had to get rid of the search button I don't need I didn't really need that so I had to go ahead to configure this so there are a few things that I did here I did the round edge I did a pattern to the left I changed the font type as well as added an icon and then also I changed the text which was within um the in focus of the search uh bar so that's what i'll be doing here so i had to change the, the font type at this point and then i had to also change the font size and then the radius so the radius is what gives it this curve edge i had to increase it to a couple of um different figures to see um if i was going to get something closer to what i had in there so that was what i was doing at this point
so 20 was still a bit small so there was a need to still increase it and then i think i went a bit higher than that and eventually uh, it worked so 25 still looked i think a bit smaller um okay i think 25 was fine i increased the pad into the left so that the text moves a bit away from the left edge so that it creates a space for the icon i want to position over this so i kept increasing that so i got something suitable to work with So at this point, I'm still trying to, you know, get the appropriate configurations done so that I have my search to, that is a side search to work in the way I want it to. So that's the search results. Those are the colors. Those are the font properties, um, the text and all those things are all here. Once you double click on the search to, you have all those um, options to work with. So I change the font size um, and then I think I, I was, that was, that was basically just about it. I had to configure the, where the search results were going to show, but I did that later on. So I think I had everything. I duplicated the icon and then I changed the icon to the search, um, icon. So I was looking for something that matched what I had on the website. So I went through the font also icon and then hopefully I was able to find something that worked well. So yeah, I found something that worked well and I went ahead to use that. So I changed the size of the icon and then I went ahead to increase the margin for the search box. So I went to the Pardon section and increase the margin or the pardon to the left. I think I had something much uh, convenient in there. I previewed that and I think uh, I was ch checking the height of that particular search box there and then I had to apply same to mine. So after doing that and then I tried testing or previewing to see if everything was in the right place. So at this point, I cloned the index page so I could create a page which was going to serve as the search results page. I later noticed or realized I wasn't going to need that, so I had to delete that. But this is what I'm doing now. I'm going to go ahead to configure that page. And then I was hoping it was going to be able to work for my search result, but it didn't really serve what I wanted to. So I later got rid of it. Now, because of how I was looking at having the search results work, I was looking at something which was going to be dynamic based on the number of items which are going to show. It was automatically going to increase the height of the page. So I was using the layout grid to achieve that. But once I noticed that I couldn't have the search result work the way I wanted, I went out to delete everything. So here I was uh, cloning a layer. And then the one with the icons and then I went ahead to change their property 
or mold to a floating layer so it could stick um, to the top exactly so that was what I was doing at this point but of course I still went ahead to delete them So in order to be able to test fully the site search um, tool, I had to publish this to um, a local host server uh, and then try it out to see if it was going to work. So that's what I'm doing here, I'm specifying the path to the local host um, server, that, that's the directory file. So then I went out to publish it, tested it in the, um, the browser to see if the, the site search was working. So it was working. But uh, unfortunately, it wasn't working the way I wanted it to work. So I had to get rid of that new page that I added. I added. To actually spend some time on the layout grid, just hoping it was going to work well, but unfortunately, they didn't. So I'll soon get rid of it. But uh, at this point, you probably will be able to figure out some few tricks or some few ways to go about using the layout grid tool. So after noticing that it wasn't going to really work well for me, then I thought of a different way of going about it. So this time around, I used the, the modal option, which is part of the search, um, the site search um, tool, which allows you to be able to um, specify how you want search results to show how many results and how you even want to go about coloring that too. I'll be doing that here. So at this point, I figured out I could show it 
and a modal box so i went ahead to use that instead of the new page entirely So I had to um, test out how the model was going to be. So after that, I went ahead to try it, um, try it, and then um, made sure it was going to work well for this particular project. So. so I previewed this, hoping to test it, having something working, and then tested this i uh, had to clear the link to be on the exact um, page that is the home page which is a local host for slash test site and then entered the ppp just to test something out and then i had um, the pop-up i should have a pop-up window showing um, right so that's the model that was showing it looked small i had to tweak the settings of it a little bit so i went back to the application and then I corrected those things and I came back to test it again. So I'm still testing out the modal options to see which one or which settings of it is really going to work well. So I changed the width size, I changed the height, the alignment. I tried you know, a couple of the options over there just to see what was going to work well for me. So after a couple of tries, I uh, still try now, but after a couple of tries, I, I decided I was going to stick to the, the model, but this time around, I was going to change the animation or the effects that it comes with once you search for an object. That brings the search results um, in the modal box. And then also how it hides once you close it, you close it. So I kept you know publishing, trying, testing, just to get what I wanted. And after getting satisfied with what I was able to configure, or to set the whole thing to, then I went out to proceed with the other aspect of the site.
so i am actually getting to the end of this video um i spent i think about one hour 37 minutes in total to finish up with the desktop layout and then the next part is going to be um, the responsive part so i'll have to end this video um, shortly so it doesn't get too too long i'm trying to figure out how to go about some of these basic things so um i'm still trying to configure the model to show results appropriately and then that was uh that was actually what ended this session having the model um you know box for search results configured well and then having it function properly so that is what i'm trying to do here i took some time to be able to get it to work exactly the way i wanted but it's worth it because at the end of the day like i said from the very beginning sometimes some of these projects you have to try a couple of things to see how that is going to be before you're able to get exactly what you want and as you keep trying new things you discover new tools you discover new processes and you're able to improve upon your skill set especially when it comes to wizard with web builder this is what i've personally been trying or been implementing over the years and it's helped me be able to improve upon my skills work faster and you know be able to figure out how to go about a couple of things once i am taxed to you know work on them or once i see them so that is what i have actually used and going about this particular project this happens to be my first um, more or less like a live demo video i have not necessarily live demo but starting something from scratch and then going to finish it so i am hoping you enjoy this or you'll be enjoying this kind of videos because i'm looking forward to be able to do more uh looking at some more projects i may be working on and probably um switch on the record button to be able to record the entire process that is going to be involved in working on some of these things so um i'm going to leave this to continue the process till i'm done but there's going to be a background music playing so it doesn't get so boring as you're trying to figure out what is being done so this is going to be a part one of the two um, two videos which the first one focuses on starting everything from scratch configuring and then going about the design process and then the second one is going to focus on making the project responsive so that will be about it for now in case you are new and you haven't subscribed to this channel yet kindly go ahead and hit on the subscribe button and then don't forget to hit on the bell so that anytime i have a new video you'll be the first to see it so thank you for watching once again stick true to the end of this video to learn more and i'll see you in the next video